and uh, Brother Clay usually comes up and talks about that. But uh, all of you that are tuning in, obviously you found it. But I do want you to know that YouTube, through Tiff Tony Baptist Church, then also our Facebook Live uh, is the two ways that we are streaming live. Now, we've got better. Uh, our, everything's working really good tonight. We've, I, appreciate, I want to say, first of all, I appreciate Brother Arnold Shown and Hunter Shown. They were a great help and a blessing to us this week. And uh, they've got our internet running very good, so I think YouTube is running very smoothly. Facebook Live is running smoothly. And so those are the two platforms to continue to invite folks and get people out tuning in uh, to the broadcast. I want to give you one just very good news. We had a, a, a message today speaking of someone in their family that had not been in church for a long, long time, many, many years. And through all of this, they've been tuning in and listening to our broadcasts. And so praise God for that. I'm sure that can be said all around the country. Uh, I was speaking with Brother Kevin earlier. He told me that there's many people that have come to him and, and said, you know, through all of this, the Lord is working in my heart. And so let's be sensitive to what the Lord is doing. But here in a minute, uh, we're going to do something special during our offertory. We're going to have an offertory tonight. Brother Clay's going to come up here in just a bit, and he's going to give the platform and how we can give. And then we're going to have an offertory tonight to give you an opportunity if you'd like to give tonight by way of online. But so let's do this. Let's get right to prayer. I want you to get a pen and a piece of paper out because I have quite a few things that we want to pray about. I've already mentioned Brother Roy. Let's continue to bathe him in prayer. Let's pray for Carolyn that God would help her and cover her. And by the way, church, she's still not feeling well at all. So she's dealing with all of this, plus her health is still very poor. And uh, let's pray for her and ask God to strengthen her, help her, and comfort her. I want you to pray. Write down Miss Grace Gilly. Uh, this is Miss Myra's mother. And uh, the Lord might see fit to take her home in the next couple of days. I went over there and had prayer with her and her family. I want you to pray for Myra, Tim, and Dawn. These are the three children. And I want you to lift this family up in prayer. I want to give you another name, a little Easton Brandon. This is a one-year-old uh, child that is in intensive care, and he's struggling with Caesars. Now, this is my Uncle Nathan's grandson. So let's really bathe this little fella in prayer. Let's pray for his mom and his dad. His dad's name is Jonathan. I want you to ask God to encourage them, help them. But Lord, please, we need to pray that he touches this little boy, Easton Brandon. Then I want you to pray for Mike Brandon. This is my uncle. He's in CAMC Hospital. He had some complications due to a heart valve surgery. And so I've got some good news for mom. He's hopefully going to be able to come home soon. But let's continue to bathe him in prayer. Uh, uncle Mike, uh, Mike Brandon. And then I want you to pray for Lance and Corey Rorex. Now, uh, they'll be having, a, Miss Corey will be having a C-section on Saturday. And I want you to pray especially for Brother, Brother Lance is not going to be able to go in there with her. The family's not really going to be able to see it. So it's going to be totally different than normal. So I want you to pray that God would just help this dear precious family as they bring this precious child in, uh, of course, on Saturday. So let's pray for the Rorex family. Then I want you to pray for Martha Davis. Uh, this is Joe Curran's sister. She's in the hospital. Uh, she had a stroke, and also now she's struggling with pneumonia. So I want you to pray for Miss Martha Davis. I would like for you to write this down. I hope this is your prayer each day, that God will step down, that God will work in people's hearts. We'll see a great movement of God during this day. I'm asking you to pray that folks will attend our church services online. Let's be inviting folks. Start watch parties. Let's pray and lift God, lift them up that they would tune in. I want you to pray that God would put a hedge of protection around our folks, all of our church folks. And then I want you to pray for our country, our president, all of the government leaders. And then I want you to pray for our troops and write these troops' names down. Noah Wood, we love Brother Noah. He's serving in the Navy. Mr. Matt St. Clair, this is a dear family member of ours. Then Bradley Hammonds, Matthew McCoy, and then a new one, Hunter Leslie, and of course, he just um, got deployed, actually going to boot camp uh, just this week. And so I want you to pray for our dear precious troops, especially these that we know. And let's ask God. Uh, Brother Mike, I'm going to ask, would you come and uh, just lead us in prayer tonight? As Brother Mike comes to pray, 
I'm going to ask everyone out there, and you huddle around there, uh, maybe wherever you're at, maybe you're at a couch, maybe you're at a chair, maybe you're at a table. Why don't you make that place a special place of prayer? And let's lift up, call upon God, ask Him to move in a special way. So Brother Mike's will lead us in prayer here. Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, tonight knowing that you hear our prayers. Lord, we have some things to, to offer up to you, and Lord, that ask that your will would be done in these situations. Lord, uh, we want to pray for Roy and Carolyn Bright tonight. Yes, Dear God, we just pray, uh, Lord, that you would heal Roy's lungs. Lord, uh, heal Miss Carolyn. Lord, make them well. Lord, just touch their bodies. Give the doctors wisdom. Lord, we just offer them up to you and ask that you would uh, please intercede there in the Roy and Carolyn Brackett situation. I pray for uh, Grace Gilly, Lord, that you would uh, just give comfort there and give peace there and help the family, help Myron and Tim and Dawn. Dear Lord, we just offer uh, Grace Gilly up to you tonight. Easton Brandon, Lord, we just pray for Easton and I see you. Uh, with Caesar, dear Lord. We just pray that you would reach down and touch a precious, precious body, Lord, that you would just uh, heal there. Pray for Mike Brandon. Lord, we praise you for letting him be doing better. And Lord, we just pray that you help him to uh, to heal quickly. Uh, Lord, we pray for Lance and Corey Roritz. Lord, we pray for, for that situation, having a C-section. Lord, I pray that, that everything would go well. Lord, that you would just touch and have your will and way there. I pray for Martha Davis tonight, Lord. I pray for that uh, the, the stroke there. And I pray for, for God, for you, Lord, uh, to work in the hearts during this time, this, this trial that we're all going through. Lord, I just pray that you would uh, draw everybody uh, while you have our, all of our attention. Lord, I pray you draw us to you. Lord, I pray you would, you would change us. You would let us see that we are literally nothing without you. And Lord, that, that we need Jesus Christ as our Savior. And Lord, I pray you would open our eyes and that we would, uh, the ones that are Christians, Lord, I pray that we would dedicate ourselves to you, that we would uh, make a vow to live for you. The ones that are not saved, I pray that there be conviction and there be many souls saved as a result of this trial that we're going through. I pray for all the leaders. I pray for our president, uh, that for, for decisions to be made. Lord, I pray that you would give clarity of thinking to our leaders today. Lord, I pray for all the people that are serving our country. I pray for Noah. I pray for Matt. I pray for Bradley. I pray for Matthew. I pray for Hunter, Lord, and everybody else that are serving and, and giving their life to serve the country. I pray that you would, uh, Lord, keep them safe. Lord, I pray that you would help them to be a good testimony where they are. Uh, Lord, I pray that they'd be a, a bright and shining light in a dark world. Uh, Lord, I, I do pray these things for these precious people tonight. Now, I pray for everybody that's listening. Lord, that they'd be encouraged. I pray that uh, if somebody's listening, dear Lord, they're not saved, please convict and draw that soul to Jesus Christ. And we ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. All right. As the pastor said, we want to do something a little unusual tonight. We want to give you the opportunity to give. So let me quickly give you our information about our online giving platform. If you go to TBC Chattanooga, this is for Tiff Tony Baptist Church, tbcchattanooga.com, you go right to the front page of our website. At the very top on one of the tabs, there's some tabs. One says about us, one says ministries, one says home, uh, sermons, different things. There's a tab that says give. You're just going to click that tab. That's going to take you right to our Tidely page. Uh, where you can insert your card information. We recommend inserting your bank information, uh, linking uh, your routing number with Tyler. We think that's the best way. That's going to take a smaller percentage um, out of your tithes and offering. And again, why is it important um, that we give? For a couple reasons. Because we do not want the Lord's work to cease. Amen. There's still things. In fact, we had uh, men here today. We were putting together desks and cleaning out rooms. We have a work going on here. And uh, so we know anything in this world that needs to get done takes finances to get done and so the other and biggest reason why we want to encourage you to continue to give is because it is an act of worship uh, worship the Lord through form of giving so we want to give you that opportunity 
And so we're going to have an offertory. I'm going to pray, and we're going to have an offertory. We're going to give you just a couple minutes here the opportunity to get to give. And also, let me just encourage you guys, if you have any questions about our online giving platform, just something doesn't make sense to you, you can reach out to me, give me a call, text me, message me on Facebook. Just reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to try to help you along with our online giving. And also, you can always bring buy offerings to the church during regular business hours and mail them in. And so, uh, although we're not meeting corporately, this is something we do not want to hinder you uh, from doing. And so let's pray together and we'll have this offer toward Dear Heavenly Father, again, we just want to thank you for the opportunity that we have, Lord, the access we've been given to speak to you tonight. I pray that you would be with this uh, remainder of the service. Lord, that you would just use this service. Lord, we don't know who is tuned in and who will tune in later, but Lord, use this service all for your honor and for your glory. Lord, work in hearts. Lord, if there's anyone tuned in tonight or will tune in later and they do not know you as their Lord and Savior, Lord, they do not know the true source of hope in the midst of the situation yes. we're in as a culture. I pray that, Lord, you would show them the beauty of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Show them the wonder of the cross. Lord, show them what true hope and true joy looks like in a fallen world. Again, pray that you would be with everything said and done. Be with everything that we've prayed about tonight. Lord, we have many burdens tonight. Lord, we're thankful that you're acquainted with our sorrows. Lord, you know our burdens. And so, Lord, we pray that you would just be with us yes. as a people. In your name we do pray. Amen. Amen.
possible, let's make it as normal as possible, like you'd be sitting in church and so many of you have commented and said we're thankful for the opportunity to have service this way because many of you have told us that it just feels like you're there. And that's the way we want it to be because you know what? We are here. We're here. And uh, no matter where we gather, listen church, we're, the, we're, we're a family that God's put together and we're going to continue uh, to just meet here, even if it's by Facebook Live and YouTube. My wife said to me today, she said, Honey, I sure miss our church. And I want you to know, church, we sure miss seeing all of you. But we are sure praying for you. And I tell you what, I can't wait for the day that this passes and we're able to meet here together. What a day that's going to be. And I'm already thinking about it. And we're going to have a big day. And I believe there will be no reason why this place shouldn't be packed out and excited. And uh, let's be praying about it, church. God's going to work. God's going to move. John chapter 16. I want to encourage you tonight. Verse 29 is what we begin reading. John chapter 16, verse 29. The Bible says, His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee, by this we believe that thou camest forth from God. And Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. <laughs> and yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me, in me, listen to your church, mark it, in me, you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Heavenly Father, I pray tonight that you will speak to our hearts, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want to share with you, if you'll notice, we won't look there, but if you'll look in chapter 18, just the chapter following Chapter 17, you're going to understand a very critical event takes place that the Lord Jesus Christ is arrested. So chapter 17 is just on the eve of him being arrested, wrongfully tried, wrongfully accused, and wrongfully put to death. This is on the eve of these disciples' lives changing forever. And so I want you to know this is a very intimate, precious scene. The Lord Jesus has gathered his disciples around and he's speaking to them. Their hearts are heavy. His heart is heavy. And I want you to know tonight all of us deal with heaviness and uncertainty. We're dealing with some of that today. I must say, I know that we're having uh, trusting the Lord, but no doubt uh, we are still heavy at heart. We hurt for the people we love. And there's a lot of heaviness going on today. Not that we don't have hope, not that we don't have peace, not that we don't have victory, but, you know, when you're a Christian, you have family, church family, they're like family. And when they hurt, Brother Robert West has been contacting me the last few days. He said, Pastor, our church family, when one hurts, we all hurt. That's so true, isn't it? And so we're heavy tonight, maybe, but I'm joyful, I'm, I'm excited, I'm trusting the Lord and what He's going to do, and I'm also just joying in my heart, overjoying in my heart, that we've gotten at least a little bit of good news about Brother Roy. But I want you to look at this touching moment where Jesus Christ offers confidence in a time of uncertainty, and that's the message tonight, confidence in uncertain times. I want you to notice the Bible says in verse 33, these things I have spoken unto you that in me, now don't miss it, in me, in me. You say, Pastor, where is your confidence? It's not in me. <laughs> it's not in you. It's not in our society. It's not in our president. And by the way, I appreciate our president and what he stands for. I'm thankful that he believes in religious freedom. I'm thankful for our government officials, but my confidence is not in the government. My confidence is not in the White House. My confidence is not in wherever I might be employed. The Bible says that we must understand that in me, in Jesus Christ, you might have peace. So this is confidence in an uncertain world. I can, 
get off the phone with Miss Carolyn just a moment ago. And I said, uh, Miss Carolyn, we can get off this phone still uh, having hope. We can still wake up tomorrow and know there's a purpose and a peace because we find all of this in the person of Jesus Christ. So I say to you, our uncertainty is in Him. Uh, our confidence is in Him during these uncertain days. So let me give you a few things that I pray will help you. Number one, I want you to notice the moment of preparation. He sees the moment here. The Lord Jesus knew what was going to take place. Completely knew what was going to take place in the chapter to come. The disciples did not. The disciples did not. They just knew that the Lord, whom they had spent these many years with, was starting to talk things in ways they did not understand. They did not understand that He's getting ready to be arrested. They don't understand that He's going to be tried. They don't understand completely that He's going to be hung from an old rugged cross and the one that they had followed and all their dreams were in was going to die. They didn't understand all of this, but Jesus did. Jesus knew what was on the horizon, so he took this intimate moment, this precious moment, and he tried to prepare his disciples. Now, church, stay with me a minute, because I want you to know something. We've been preaching for years. You've been reading your Bible for years. You've been praying for years. And now we're in a day where it does seem like it's uncertain. These are difficult days, but all of us have been prepared. All of us have been prepared. I want to say that the promises of God are just as good today as they were 15 years ago. Maybe we need to claim them a little more today. But I want you to know something. He took an, an opportunity to prepare His disciples. And by the way, we ought to be wise and we ought to prepare. And we ought to be sitting down our children during this day. And we ought to be talking to our children about the important things of life. The valuable things of life. And I'm talking about life and death and how to have life more abundantly. And teach them about Jesus Christ because He lives. We can face tomorrow. These are the things that we ought to be preparing ourselves and our children with. Why? Because time of difficulty will come. It's here. We will have time of doubt. It's here. There will be time, though, even during this time, there's a time of determination. Look at verse 32. Behold, the hour come of yea is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. But notice this, yet I am not alone. And so I want you to notice, no matter where you are, you might be alone tonight in your home. And what I mean by that is, there's no one physically in that home with you, but oh, just wait a minute. Now just, you can shout if you want to, but you're not alone. Jesus Christ is there. He says He'll never leave you nor forsake you. So I want you to notice he took this precious moment to prepare his disciples. He took this intimate time to try to teach them some important things. The difficulty was coming. Some trying days was coming. And they're going to have to wake up here in a few days. And everything they thought it was going to be like is completely gone. And by the way, our lives have changed today completely different than what we thought they would be a month ago. But can I say to you, if we know the Lord Jesus and we're trusting His promises then, then God is preparing us to help us to realize during these difficult days, we still have peace in Him. Number two, I want you to notice this message was a message of transformation. It was a moment of preparation, but I want you to notice it was a message of transformation. Look at verse 33. These things I have spoken to you that in me you might have peace. Now, I want you to know something. He knew, like I said a moment ago, that he knew they were going to be tried. He knew they were going to be scattered. He knew they were going to be fearful. He knew that they were going to scatter in fear. They did leave him. Uh, wasn't it Peter uh, denied the Lord three times? They left him. They were afraid. And he knew they were going to be tried. He knew that they was going to struggle. But he also knew this. He knew they were going to endure. He knew they were going to endure. And I want you to know something. He knew they were going to be strengthened. Because the Bible says in me. He said you might have some doubts. You might have some fear. You scattered. But I want you to know something. You're going to come back and you're going to realize your peace, your hope, your joy is in me. And by the way, three days after he died, praise the Lord he raised from the dead. So you can imagine their confidence when they seen him. And he just again, just encouraged them to know in me you have peace. And so I want you to notice that message has not changed. If you know Jesus Christ, your hope and peace is in Him tonight. It's a message of transformation. Why? Because He gave them a message of comfort. 
know everybody's wanting right now, they're wanting a message of comfort. Everybody's wanting everybody to tell them that it's going to be okay. They, we're, we're tuning into the television. We're wanting the president to tell us it's okay. And we're listening to all the experts, and they're, we're wanting them to tell us that all of this is going to be okay. But can I say, if we never get those words from our president, we never get those words from the, the professional medical profession. Listen to me. We've already been given those words of comfort, comfort from our Savior. It was a word of comfort. Look at it. The Bible says in me you might have peace. Isn't that what everybody wants? Peace of heart, peace of mind. God gives it in Jesus. It was a word of comfort. Listen, that's practical. Their world would soon be filled with turmoil. Their world would soon be turned upside down, just like maybe ours is today. But I want you to know something. What a word of comfort. He said, in me you might have peace. Can I help you before you put your children to bed tonight? I think about it, I've thought about it often here. You know, I, I was raised in a Christian home, and I thank God for my parents. My mother would tuck us into bed every night. There was not a night that went by, I can't remember a night that went by that my mother did not tuck me into bed, and she always did this. She said, Mark, I just want you to lay in bed tonight. You're going to go to sleep. She said, I just want you to know Mommy loves you, Daddy loves you, and Jesus loves you most of all. What a wonderful assurance to put your children to bed every night knowing that they can have peace in Jesus Christ. And by the way, it's the same with us today. Storms and uncertainty will be here. It's not always easy. Not all things are understood, but we serve the one who offers peace in the midst of a raging storm. So in him, he gives us a message of comfort. Can I say he gives us a word of confirmation? Look at verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you that in me, you might have peace, but in the world you shall have tribulation. Now here's, here's what he confirms. I want you to know, he was not being dishonest. He was not sugarcoating anything. He was telling these disciples, he said, listen, I want you to know something. Because you're a Christian, because you've served me, because you have trusted me as your personal Savior, he said, I want you to know that your world is going to become turmoil. It's going to be full of turmoil here before long because you're going to see some things you never dreamed that you would see. The very same that they had followed for three years, they seen him hanging on a cross. They seen these very ones that was receiving him just a few days before. Now they're saying, crucify him, crucify him. They watched their Savior bleed and die before them on an old rugged cross. And so could you imagine if you were there? So we understand that he understood that he knew that they were going to have to confront tribulation. He knew they were going to have to confront some trouble. And I want you to know something. As Clay preached on Sunday night, just because you're a Christian does not mean that we're always going to be sunny days. We understand. The Bible says, he said, look, you're going to be scattered. You're going to have tribulation. He said, I'm not going to... I'm not going to play games with you boys. He said, he said to them, in the world ye shall have tribulation. He confirmed it. And I want you to know today that it must, we must understand that we as Christians will suffer persecution and tribulation and problems and trouble and storms. And I believe, I fear, I fear that we have been lulled to sleep that suffering is for some other people somewhere else. But this is a great wake-up call. Church, listen, we need to understand that we're living in this world that will, we will, the Bible says we will, shall have tribulation. So we need to understand that we're in a, in a, in a society, in a culture, it's not the Christian's friend. And we understand they don't always understand us, they don't always like us. But I want to tell you something, I thank God. If we'll have the right testimony and we have the right spirit, I'll tell you right now, they'll have to respect us. They must respect the Word of God because we know what the Word of God teaches. So persecution is not always a sign or trouble is not always a sign that we're doing bad. No, quite often it's the opposite. And so I say during this time of turmoil and maybe of uncertainty in these days in which we're living on, I say to every Christian, shine on. Shine on. Turn your light up brighter. Witness for the Lord Jesus brighter. Sing your songs brighter. Tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ and what He means to you and how He's changed your life. I say it's a word of confirmation, but I also want you to know tonight as I close, it's a word of conquest. Well, I praise God for the last part of verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you. Me, you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But now y'all just sit still and don't get excited. 
but be of good cheer. <laughs> I have overcome the world. Did y'all get that? Y'all should be shouting amen in your house. He, look, y'all, I am on the winning side. Yes, I'm on the winning side. No more. Out in sin will I abide. I've enlisted in the fight for the cause of truth and right. Praise the Lord. I'm on the winning side. Look at me, church. Sing that tonight because we've overcome the world in Jesus. So don't be so gloom and doom tonight. Trust the Lord. We understand he's already given us this promise. He said, I have overcome the world. How many of you tonight? I know I can't hear you, but I hear the ones in here tonight. How many of you out there know Jesus as you say it? Amen. And if you're at home, you should shout, let's try it again. How many of you know Jesus as you say it? Amen. And you've overcome the world too. You've been given victory. You've been given conquest. And so I want to say, the disciples were overwhelmed at this point. But praise God, the last promise helped them. And this last promise is going to help us tonight. He has overcome the world, and so have we. Now listen to me. Doubt and fear and discouragement will creep in at times. And we must, at times, those things will help us or they will, they will bombard us to question our faith. You just need to keep your eyes on Jesus. Your faith in the Lord should be strong during these days. And can I say why? Because victory was secured at Calvary and an empty tomb in the Middle East. Can I say to you why is Christians a little strange during these days? And maybe they're not quite as panicked as others. And maybe we're not quite as fearful. But it should be that way for the Christian. You know why? Because we're already winners. Our victory has been secured at Calvary. At the cross, at the cross. Now listen to me. If you're listening tonight and you do not know Jesus Christ your Savior, can I say to you as kindly but as clearly as I possibly can, you have no hope. Jesus Christ is the way. John 14, 6 says, for I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I'm not offering religion to you tonight. I'm offering you can enter into a precious, wonderful, intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He can be your shepherd. As I quoted this morning to a dear precious lady that might be in her last days, I can tell peace just gave her peace as, she, as we quoted that verse, the Lord is my shepherd. Is he your shepherd tonight? Now look, he's not going to become your shepherd because you deserve it. He's not going to become your shepherd because you've tried to live a good life. By the way, I think it's great that you try to live a moral life. And can I say this and make this clear? You're not going to make him your shepherd by getting dumped in any water. There's no water on this earth that can wash away sins. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. See, Jesus Christ died on that cross for you and me. That's why he came. That's why he came. He bled and died to pay for our sin debt. As a little boy, I used to sing a song, I owed a debt that I could not pay. I needed someone to pay that debt for me. And I want to say to you tonight, Jesus Christ paid that debt. He paid the debt of Calvary. And by the way, he got the receipt when he raised from the dead. <laughs> Hey, listen to me tonight. We have a risen to say, you go over there. By the way, Lord willing, hopefully in maybe December, we'll get to see that empty tomb. But you go over there in the empty tomb right now. And by the way, it's empty because Jesus didn't need it because Jesus raised from the dead. Amen. And I want to say our victory was secured at Calvary in the empty tomb. And we are victorious in Jesus Christ. So tonight, do you know him? Do you know him? You say, Pastor, I'm going to be honest with you. I've been thinking about a lot of things with all this stuff going on. I hope you are. You say, Pastor, I'm just going to be honest with you. I, I, I just can't get any peace. I can't get any hope. I'm, I'm struggling with this. I don't see any light in the tunnel. Then you need to meet Jesus. Because in Him, He'll help you. He'll give you light. He'll give you peace. He'll give you comfort. You can enter into a precious relationship with the Lord Jesus. You say, Pastor, how to do that? Well, by faith. 
Maybe you're out there listening tonight and there's something beating in your soul and you know there's an emptiness there. You know, you don't have any clue. You're, 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 you're uncertain of what would happen to you if you was to die. You're uncertain. Can I help you? You can be certain. We have two phone numbers here. We have two lines. One phone number, you call 825 0511 825-423-825-0511 here's, here's what I want to ask you to do I want you to dial that number if you're out there tonight and you say Pastor Mark I'm going to be honest with you I don't know for sure if I die I'm going to go to heaven you can know we have two folks manning these lines they will show you they will read to you the precious word of God you can be saved tonight by putting trust in Christ you can be saved tonight by trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior. You say, well, Pastor Brandon, I don't want to make a big fuss about it. I don't want to call on the phone and get someone to help me. Listen, I would let somebody help me. But even if you don't want to call and get somebody to help you, would you make your couch, would you make your chair, wherever you are, would you bow your head tonight? And by faith, would you pray and ask God to save you from your sins, that you put your faith in Jesus Christ and Christ alone. So there's an old-fashioned word called conviction. If you've listened tonight and you do not know Jesus, the Holy Spirit of God's convicting you. Just say yes to Him. Call this number, 825 Let someone take the Bible and show you how to be saved tonight. Can I say to all of our Christian friends listening, would you be praying? Let's pray that God will move in hearts. We, yes, these are uncertain days for us, but I want you to know something. I am more excited today knowing that God is going to use this. I've already seen him use it. We're seeing people post things on Facebook, and you have too, that has never posted anything about the Lord, about spiritual things. God's using this. There's people that had no desire to come to church, walk through these doors, but they're walking through these doors by way of the internet. They're hearing the word of God. They're hearing beautiful songs. They're listening to the gospel. Let's pray. What can we do? We can pray. We can invite. We can talk to others about the Lord. Why? We have peace in Him. We have peace in Him. I pray tonight you'll let God have His way in your heart tonight. Listen, if you're out there tonight you do not know Jesus, please call 825-0511. If you've prayed and you've asked Jesus to save you tonight, would you call and at least let us know so we can rejoice with you tonight. We're going to close in prayer. I pray that every Christian will take his word and apply it to our church. Didn't you like that? I tell you, that little verse, boy, just really helped me. These things I have spoken to you that in me, in me, you might have peace in him. That will sustain us through the night. That will sustain us through the week. Let's trust him tonight. Let's be much in prayer. Let's be tuning in. Let's be getting other folks to come out. And why don't some of you text me? Some of you call me. You can Facebook me, message me. Let me know if you've sent out parties. You've got folks um, tuning in. Let me know. That's encouraging to us. And uh, you keep us posted on that end. And we'll do our very best to keep you posted on this end. Now, again, Sunday morning, we'll be planning Sunday morning, Sunday night. We've got special music. Looking forward to it. Remember the devotions tomorrow morning and Friday morning, the Saturday prayer meeting, 8 o'clock. I know some of you ladies are praying. Let's continue to pray for revival. And let's just trust the Lord in all of this. And so please be much in prayer, Brother Roy. I will keep you posted as I get updates. And let's just trust God to raise him up off this bed of illness. And we'll praise him for it. Amen. Let's pray tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. Please now, Lord, take your word. And help us not just not to be hearers of the word, but help us to be doers of the word. Lord, I pray that you'll help Tiftonia Baptist Church as we gather in our homes tomorrow and wherever we may go, that we'll be the church of the living God. Pray you'll help us to be about your business in these days, helping others and sharing your word and sharing you with others. And we'll thank you for what you do. Please touch Brother Roy tonight. 
We'll thank you and praise you for it. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, church. Have a wonderful, wonderful night.